That's quite a scratch you got there. Never thought I'd say this, but it's good to see you, Arthur Morgan. The relationship between John Marston and Arthur Morgan is one of the more complex and redeeming aspects of Arthur's life. In a way, his relationship with his adopted brother can be seen as a mirror of the way he has chosen to lead his life, to gut those out that made him feel vulnerable, betrayed, easily forgotten, and reliving some type of childhood pain. During the peak of his physical health and at the apex of his position within the Vanderland gang due to Dutch's favor and possibly a more proactive role of a younger Hosea within the gang's day-to-day -day operations, Arthur had no need to change his thinking, his way of life, his way of letting people in or not. Do we get a hug, Arthur? A warm embrace for a lost brother now found. <laughs> you know, nothing means more to me than this gang, the bond we share. It's the most real thing to me. I would kill for it, I would happily die for it, but in spite of all of that, I would have easily left you here to rot if Charles hadn't stopped me. Considering he was an orphan and later suffered the immense pain of finding out his young son Isaac and the mother of his child Eliza were killed over a measly ten dollars. I had a son once, years ago. Don't talk about him much. Oh, what was his name? Isaac. He was such a good kid. She was too, I guess. <laughs> Just a kid, 19. What happened? I got there one day and saw two crosses outside. I knew right away. Turned out some bastards had come through. Robbed them. And shot them dead. And offered $10. Hardened me. Feeling that kind of pain. Wait, stop here. He learned time and again. This world is especially cruel and ruthless, and he wouldn't be faulted for retreating inward quite a bit. Due to personal pain and trauma along with the gang's very high standard of loyalty, there's no question why he felt the way he did towards John at the beginning of the game. Hostile, sarcastic, and dismissive. But it's little John. He's got himself caught into a scrape again. He ain't been seen in two... two days. Your John will be fine. I mean... He may be as dumb as rocks and as dull as rusted iron, but that ain't changing because he got caught in some snowstorm. It takes some time for it to be revealed to us, with Hosea and Charles slowly making progress, asking particular questions, and of course some direct conversations with John for us to get the full picture. On the surface, Arthur Mass, the aggression towards John is simply breaking a code. A code the gang and every one of its members are expected to adhere to. You put in your share, you have the gang stay afloat, and most of all, you stay loyal. Loyal to the cause, loyal to Dutch, loyal to each other. From that perspective, John was arguably the biggest failure. He denied Jack as his son, went back and forth on if he was going to look after him or not, or even if he was going to make a full commitment to Abigail, questioning his priorities and personal commitment to this young boy and his mother while well, expected to continue to put in enough work to ensure the gang was okay. John collapsed. He decided it was best to just leave, disappearing without a word for over a year, the source of Arthur's hostility towards him. It's unfortunate we never get to really hear what John was up to within the time he was away. If he managed to do enough soul searching to make sure he was able to return to Dutch's presence with a new sense of clarity and understanding of himself and what family really meant to him. John had experienced the hardships of being an orphan himself after all. Maybe he wanted to spare Jack from a life of wondering about his father. Whatever the reason, John does decide to return, and in time, seemingly everyone forgave him for his disappearance. Everyone except Arthur, pushing him to just leave again. Why return? Why come back if there's just going to be so much arguing and fighting between him and Abigail? Why is he so defensive when Arthur's asked and obliges to take Jack out on a fishing trip to help him experience something beyond just being stuck in camp all day long? If John claims Jack isn't his, what's the difference? Why does he care? Why does it matter? Why is he here? With Arthur being the only one seemingly giving John so much grief, and with him even saying they were a family and he really hasn't forgiven him for just up and leaving for over a year, this was Arthur's frustration, pain and emotions slowly bubbling to the surface. It seemed as if this was the first time he finally got an opportunity to face John. Keep in mind, we don't know exactly what the Vanderland gang was getting up to at the exact point in time when John joins back. 
If Arthur's journal is any indication of their doings, they sound as if they were constantly moving, trying to scrape up enough cash to leave or settle somewhere else. Really no different than the events of the story of Red Dead Redemption 2 itself. Just during the game, the stakes are a lot higher and the gang is under much more pressure thanks to what transpired in Blackwater and an intense interest in apprehending Dutch thanks to the Pinkertons receiving direct financial support from Leviticus Cornwall. Right before Coulter, when the Vandalin gang was staged up in Blackwater looking for potential opportunities within the small city, Arthur was heavily invested in a job with Hosea, Dutch was heavily invested with his own doings with Micah, and Arthur pointed out John and Abigail were fighting to the point of exhaustion. With Dutch, Hosea, Arthur, and the rest of the gang's enforcers, since the ferry job was going to require some amount of firepower, all focusing on the bigger picture and their collective future, breaking off the diligence and making sure the job with Hosea was going to go smoothly, or if Dutch would require some more assistance in an effort to handle a personal slight felt towards his brother, it just doesn't sound like the time or place. But here with John feeling better and making attempts to help the gang out, while still appearing to be a little unsure of his position with Abigail and Jack, now was his time to speak up. Well, as much as he could, as Arthur isn't really the emotional type. I guess you could also say John's continued inconsistency with Jack at this time could be a reason why Arthur may still see him as unreliable and possibly leaving again. It's not a particularly long exchange or one filled with many words between the two of them, but during the mission The Sheep and the Goats, Arthur can be seen having little patience for how short John is on details about a job he's got going on. When asked why John is being so short, he simply responds with, he's not the one taking Jack out on fishing trips. Why are you being so cagey about all this? Always playing some goddamn game. Me? I ain't the one taking Jack on fishing trips. No, you ain't. If you say the boy ain't yours, what's the difference? You probably only run off again. Why are you so interested in my life? Ain't you got one of your own? Just do one thing or another. Not be two people at once, that's all I'm saying. It ain't that simple. You know that as well as anyone. Same as with you and that girl... What was her name? Mary? It's a very small demonstration of the tension between the two of them. The tension that they've been experiencing for some time now. With both of them throwing their personal lives in each other's faces, clearly John felt a way about Arthur, possibly in his eyes stepping in and doing something he should have been doing. But instead of making it right between Abigail and Jack, he instead does the opposite. He leans more into the gang, looks for opportunities to acquire some cash, and tries to be much more proactive. This creates another dilemma for John, as attempting to show the gang he's still loyal and committed to them, his original family, this creates more tension between him and Abigail. She doesn't want this life for her, for John, for their son. It's as if he was already having enough of a tough time dealing with being a new father, leaving only made things worse. And no matter how much time has passed since he came back, no matter what he does, he still can't get anything right, whether in the eyes of the gang or in the eyes of Abigail and doing right by Jack. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever noticed with the exception of the epilogue, John isn't seen or heard from that much? He has the most interactions and mission presence during Chapter 2, Horseshoe Overlook, and Chapter 6, Beaver Hollow. Yet despite him being in front of us for roughly the same amount of time, have you ever realized you feel, or we feel, drastically differently towards John during these two chapters? Horseshoe Overlook doesn't paint him in the best light. He doesn't really say much to defend himself from Arthur's comments, thus making him seem guilty and dodgy. I hope so. But I fear you don't know how to help anyone. Except in yourself. You see, O'Driscoll? If this is how he treats his friends, imagine what he does to his enemies. Two unsavory traits. The essence of his conversations with Arthur at the time involve him being unloyal and unreliable. With him not really adding any comments of his own, maybe it was great writing owned to Arthur as He's not really reflective or giving the benefit of the doubt at this point in time in the game. So lending some credence to John maybe being silent as he could be either ashamed, feeling guilty, or outright hoping it all be forgotten. Maybe it's a mixture of the three. Arthur's rekindled relationship with his brother John is fascinatingly in line with John's acceptance of being a father. The chapter of Horseshoe Overlook, his parental decisions or lack of them is a point to be highlighted. During Clement's point, there's a moment where Hosea does tell him to get his head out of his ass and do the right thing for his wife and son, kind of continuing that narrative. The thing is, John, the thing is we all gotta die. I know that, I of all people know that. Excuse me? 
We all got to die, but you got the chance to live. Not just to live, to live for love. I got no goddamn clue what you're on about, Hosea. You're not as dumb as you act, John Marston. I don't understand. Be a man, John. It would suit you. But by contrast, John's presence is pretty lacking during Clement's point. He does take part in stealing some horses from the Greys, showing some level of being proactive in the gang's operations here, but where he really shines during this chapter is towards the end. Notably the last two missions, Blood Feuds, Ancient and Modern, and the Battle of Shady Bell. Now in another video I've highlighted the significance of these two missions and how vital they were in John's transition into accepting being a father, and actually accepting Jack and Abigail. For the first time in the entire game, he shows some resolve and clarity of mind. He's committed to something. Yes, it's out of guilt that Jack is suffering due to his father and the gang's horrible decision making. As he says, they chose that life, not him. He's just a kid. But it's the moment where he finally, finally commits to something. Being a true father and the man Abigail deserves. It's not exactly a great one fresh out the gate, but it's something. It's a start. It's regret induced but sometimes people need a little fear to realize what's most important to them. Now in said previous video, I focused on John's change in mentality. Jack's kidnapping was the point where he prioritized being a father and started to turn against Dutch and Hosea, citing their belief and commitment to getting involved with the Greys and Braithwaite's affairs as the very reason Jack was kidnapped and the gang situation went from bad to worse. What I didn't highlight as much in that video was this was also the first time Arthur begins to ease up towards John. Since there isn't as much between Arthur and John to concretely say what it is that leads to that, Arthur's attention is pulled in many different directions and there is less screen time and personal conversations between him and John. Sure, it could have been as easy as seeing how distraught John was at Jack's disappearance and having John stick around and endure all the fighting happening in Valentine and everything going on here within Rhodes between the Braithwaite and Greys. Seeing John endure even more hardship right next to the rest of the gang could have been a lot easier for Arthur to drop his guard down. Or perhaps the words of dissension at such a crucial point was something Arthur was aware could be detrimental to the overall morale of the gang. Sean had just been killed, Jack was gone, and the gang was further from their planned destinations. Unity was important now more than ever. True. On the other hand, Arthur is also shown to mask his own vulnerabilities and feelings towards John, especially behind doing what's best for the gang. Keeping the gang's integrity and code of loyalty is rule number one. And what about the full conversation on the way to Shady Bell? It's pretty lengthy with John first beginning to place the gang's woes on Dutch and Hosea. Then John mentions how regretful he is about treating Jack so poorly and by extension Abigail, with a ride ending with John mentioning leaving again when he was stuck on the mountaintop during Clement's Point. When I was lost on that mountain after Blackwater, part of me thought, I could just leave again and no one would ever know. But some wolves thought otherwise. Look, you're here now, and this spot we're going to, it's close to San Denis. Soon as we get the others safe, we'll find this Bronte and get Jack back. He doesn't push the issue. He doesn't remind John of all his mistakes or the choices he's made and direct contradiction of doing right by Abigail and Jack. Instead, Arthur calms him down, tells him he's here now and will save Jack together. There's nothing to be worried about. I don't think anyone ever would have doubted Arthur loving John like a brother, even at the beginning where he seems so hostile. And honestly, with the exception of Hosea, I don't think anyone other than Arthur can really hear John speak openly about how he's feeling towards Dutch, the situation surrounding Jack, and the gang. They're the only two that I think really hold John's best interests at heart. Any other gang member would be more concerned with what John is saying rather than what he's actually feeling. He's openly disrespecting their leaders, and if some of the camp conversations during Beaver Hollow hold any indication of how blindly some of the gang's members can be in following Dutch... You think Dutch has lost his mind, Arthur? I don't know anymore. I'm not sure I even care. Well, Micah... Micah says you've been saying crazy things about him. Micah. <laughs> Keep an eye out for Micah, Bill. He says a whole lot. Hearing John refer to Dutch and Jose as con men playing games, I think would be more of a point of interest rather than giving John's words the benefit of the doubt. The father who left them for over a year, 
and just admitted to at least thinking of leaving them again. Yeah, of course he feels this way about Jack. And now look, he's starting to feel that same way about Dutch and Hosea. It's the mentality that Arthur warns him of and it's a mentality that ultimately he can't get out of. Which leads to Dutch being so willing to let him be captured during the Sandini bank robbery. Which I do believe happened and I believe it was intentional. I don't think anyone would disagree. During Beaver Hollow, John was heavily alienated from Dutch and by extension, really everyone else. With Arthur slowly being put in that same camp as him due to his illness causing his health to decline and his mentality begins to shift as well as doing things that only came with Dutch's disapproval such as helping the Wapiti Native Americans and breaking John out of Cisco Penitentiary. It begins to show them get even closer on screen. Obviously it comes at a very crucial time where Arthur's health is declining and he's trying to not only make amends with as many people as he can but he's trying to show everyone that he cares for the most that he's willing to spend his last days his final dying breath ensuring all of them are in a better place. Most of all John and him acquiring a second chance to do right for himself and his family. And if you take a step back and really look at Arthur's gradual feelings and reactions towards John, it was kind of always there. It wasn't just a manifestation of pain and disappointment being abandoned easily forgotten, which I do think is true, I mean he even admits it himself, but also Arthur just looking out for him. Don't be two people at once, accept responsibility and do the right thing. His hostility at the start could have easily been perceived as him pushing John in order for him to do the right thing. It's much easier to just up and leave. He's getting shit from Abigail for not doing the right thing by Jack. He left. They're constantly arguing and fighting. On the flip side, he's possibly feeling alienated to some degree because deep down he is aware that he basically abandoned everyone here, which could have led to feelings of just not belonging anymore. And his closest brother, he basically just burned that relationship down and he's constantly just giving him grief left and right. If he can weather everything thrown at him during Horseshoe Overlook, betray a heavy sense of remorse and investment towards what happened to Jack, and then make a commitment to Abigail. So, I was thinking, maybe it would be a little easier for me to keep an eye on him if we all stayed together. You know, in my room. You mean like a normal family? <laughs> Look around you. Ain't nothing normal about any of this. His brother was finally on the right track, a right track that was continued into Shady Bell. Sure, he still isn't the picture-perfect best husband or father, but at least he doesn't have any more uncertainty towards what he needs to do, what he wants to do. Something Hosea told him some time before, he has a chance to live and to love. Arthur repeats that sentiment. I feel like you should take your woman and child and get lost. Do you? You can... You could give something to Jack. It's that or... Well, I don't see no way out of this. But what about loyalty? Be loyal to what matters. There's so much said about the brotherhood and relationship of these two in such a small amount of time on screen. Rockstar shows in a very unique way two personalities that in some ways are complete opposites. They come together and they do complete 180s, not only personally, but together. At the start of the game, Arthur has resolution and a firm belief in himself and the gang, only for it all to crumble when Arthur experiences his own sense of being lost. What's there to believe in? What's there to fight for? He doesn't have much time left to live, so you can't really make the argument of what's there to live for, but why not spend the remaining days you have living for those you care about the most? By contrast, at the beginning of the game, John almost doesn't have any commitment towards anyone. He appears to be completely lost and almost entirely alone. I know it's hard to feel for him or see it that way, but think of everything he's dealing with. It's kind of hard to not see it any other way when you look at the big picture and the situation he's in. Maybe he had no choice and being there was the best thing for him. Maybe he felt a sense of duty to everyone he left and was compelled to return feeling a strong sense of remorse and guilt. Whatever the case, at the end, during Beaver Hollow, he says he has a family to get to. Him thanking Arthur for saving Abigail felt so personal, as if no one would have been willing to do that for just John, even if it was the right thing to do. Even if the gang wasn't falling apart, Abigail was still a member of said gang. And yet John thanked him as a personal favor, not out of a sense of duty that didn't exist anymore. Abigail's safe. So's Jack. Where are they? It was Sadie at Copperhead Land. Thank you, brother. Whether if John wasted the second chance at a better life for himself, son, and his wife, I'll leave up to you. 
But at least Arthur was able to rest knowing he did all he could to make sure John got that second chance to finally do right. And the nice little touch of John not only keeping Arthur's stuff, but continuing to write in his journal, writing down points of interest and even day-to-day -day goings and drawings was quite endearing, showing that love and appreciation really did go Please. both ways.